Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy. And in this video, we'll discuss the veins of the upper extremity. And this is probably a good time to discuss the basic differences between arteries and veins. Arteries carry blood from the heart. That is, they are efferent vessels. Since they are carrying blood from the heart, the blood is under high pressure. And because of that high pressure, that means the arteries have a thick wall. They need the thick wall to withstand the pressure, to keep from bursting. So arteries, when you see them in a cadaver, will be fairly round because they have the nice thick wall. They also appear rather whitish, a little off-white. In a living uh, being, they actually would have a pink color and you would probably see them pulsing another way to identify them arteries generally carry oxygenated blood But an important exception to that except for the pulmonary arteries. Which carry deoxygenated blood. Veins carry blood to the heart, so they are afferent vessels. The blood has passed through capillary systems, which reduces the pressure to very low levels. So this is a low pressure system. And because it is low pressure, veins have thin walls. an interesting um, piece of information is that the opening, the lumen of a vein is larger than the corresponding artery. And that's because blood is moving through the artery very quickly because of the high pressure driving it. 
in a vein, it's moving more slowly. It has to carry the same amount of blood. The blood that goes out to an area, the ha- same amount has to be brought back. So to carry a larger amount of blood, you have larger diameter. The blood is moving much more slowly. Thin walls. The thin walls mean that veins, when you see them in a cadaver, are generally collapsed. And the wall is thin enough so the vein is semi-transparent and you can see clotted blood in it so they appear blue to purple when you see them in, in the cadaver. Veins generally carry deoxygenated blood And again, the exception is the pulmonary veins, which carry oxygenated blood. Veins in the extremities, veins of the upper lower extremity, have valves in them. The important thing to remember is you only find valves in veins of the upper extremity and lower extremity. You don't find valves in veins in the head, neck, thorax, or abdomen. So not in the veins of the trunk, the head, or the neck. Only in the upper and lower extremities. And If we look at a longitudinal section through a vein of the extremity, this is where we cut along the length of the vein. What we're going to find on the inner part of the vein the inner surface of the vein forms a valve. Like so. This means that the blood can only flow in this direction. So what happens is that when blood is flowing through the vein, when blood is flowing through the vein, represented by this arrow, The valve is open.
So the valve would look like this. And the blood can flow through the vein. But when the, va when the blood stops flowing and wants to flow backwards, and it wants to flow backwards because of gravity. The reason we have valves in the veins of the extremities is because the blood has to fight gravity to get back to the heart. So. When the blood stops flowing and tries to flow backwards, the valve closes like so. And that prevents blood from flowing backwards. So the backward flowing blood gets stopped and turned back the other way. And so blood keeps moving in the proper direction. In the torso, in the head and neck, we're not fighting gravity, at least not very much. So we don't need valves to keep the blood flowing one way. One thing that helps keeping blood flowing in the correct direction, keeps flowing back to the heart in the venous system, is the skeletal muscle pump. Skeletal muscle surrounds the veins in our extremities. And when those muscles contract, they bulge. And when they bulge, they put pressure on the veins' walls, which are, remember, very thin. That pressure pushes the blood out of that area. They can't flow backward, so it can only flow towards the heart through the valve and then when the muscle relaxes and the blood tries to flow backwards the valve closes and prevents it. So a skeletal muscle pump keeps blood moving in our extremities toward the heart. The general rule is that Veins accompany arteries. And these veins are known as accompanying veins, companion veins, or Vene comitantes. Companion veins. As such, we don't name them individually. We just talk about companion veins. They could be companion veins of the digital veins, companion veins of the metacarpal veins, companion veins of the radial and ulnar veins, just companion veins. So if we look at a diagram, I'm going to start with 
veins that will look like radial and ulnar. In reality, there's generally two or more running with the radial and ulnar arteries. So let's go to the next slide. So I'm going to start distally. In other words, I'm going to draw the veins in the direction the blood flows. So we'll start distally with what would be a companion vein for the radial vein and then we'll draw in a companion vein for the ulnar vein. They will join together and form a brachial vein And the brachial vein comes up into the axillary region. In other words, it crosses the inferior border of teres major. And then it becomes the axillary vein. And the axillary vein crosses the first rib. And it becomes the subclavian vein. And the subclavian vein will then drain into the brachiocephalic vein on each side of the body. So let me put some labels here. Down here we will have the companion veins or the venae comitantes. And all of those will eventually combine to form a brachial vein. And as the brachial vein crosses the inferior border of teres major, which I'll draw as a line in here. So this is the line represents the border of teres major. We then have the axillary vein. And the axillary vein will cross over the first rib and enter the thorax as the subclavian vein. So here is the first rib, which I've indicated by another black line. And then this would be the subclavian vein. And the subclavian vein again enters the brachiocephalic vein. Now those are the deep veins, at least what I want you to know. And, and like I say, until you get to the brachial vein they all are just referred to as venae comitantes. Those are the deep veins. But we also have superficial veins. And I'm going to draw the superficial veins in in a lighter blue. Now superficial veins are found in the superficial fascia. 
in the subcutaneous connective tissue. These are the veins that when you look at a person's hand or arm and you see a vein sticking out, these are the veins that you're looking at, these superficial veins. The other veins are deep down there with the arteries. So, on the lateral side, on the radial side, there's a vein that begins down in the hand called the cephalic vein. And it runs up the lateral aspect of the limb till it gets to the shoulder and then it passes around and drains into the subclavian vein. Okay. This vein is the cephalic vein. And again, it is superficial. For example, if you're dissecting a cadaver and you take the superficial fascia off with the skin, you're going to remove this this vein. You won't even see it. There's another superficial vein on the medial side and that's the basilic vein. And I'm going to draw it here and it comes up into roughly the middle of the arm and then it drains into the brachial vein. So the basilic vein on the medial side and again it's the superficial vein. Let me cut, put a couple of lines in here so that we distinguish the basilic in light blue and the brachial vein in the dark blue. Now running in the elbow region in the antecubital fossa is a vein that interconnects cephalic and basilic. And this vein is called the median cubital vein. It's also called the antecubital vein. And it is connecting cephalic and basilic. And let me draw a line to it. And when someone does a vena puncture, this is the vein that is uh, entered with the needle. It's the vein when you look at the anterior surface of your elbow that you see sticking out. The median cubital vein. Now, deep veins if blood stops flowing if blood pools in the deep veins, you get or you can get a condition known as deep vein thrombosis.
Now, a thrombus is a blood clot. So what we're talking about is blood clotting in the veins, in the deep veins. And it's a situation that occurs when blood doesn't flow. Whenever blood pools, it will clot. These clots then can stay put and block the venous drainage from an area, causing pain and swelling. And if the clots break free, they flow back to the heart, go through the heart, because it's going through the large chambers of the heart, and go out to the lungs the clot can go to the lungs and block an artery in the lungs. And this is called a pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolisms can be life-threatening. And this is what happens, for example, when people are in uh, a, an airliner on a long intercontinental flight and they're sitting pretty much motionless so the skeletal muscle pump is not working because the muscles aren't contracted. The blood pools, forms an embolism, the embolism travels to the lungs, sticks in arteries of the lung, and the person is very sick or can die. So deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism are related. That concludes our discussion of the veins of the upper extremity. Thank you for your attention.